Welcome back to the Godot platformer game. In this section, we're going to finish the B enemy. Specifically, we're going to work on the movement logic. There are two parts to it. Number one, we're going to define two points and the B will move between them. However, this is only going to be the case if the player isn't nearby. If the player is close, then the B is going to follow the player. However, once the player gets far enough away, then the B should return to move between these two points. For all of that, we have to work inside of the B scene. And I suppose we can get started by defining two points, a start point and an end point. Although those are going to be a bit more complicated, basically. We want to keep all of those points inside of the level. In here, I want to define the paths that the B will follow. But then these points, we have to get into the B, which basically means inside of the level, I want to create a node 2D. I call this one the B path points. In there, we are simply going to add a whole bunch of markers. Let's say we have one marker 2D at the moment in the top left, but this marker we can place, let's say here. Then we can duplicate the marker and put it, I don't know, let's say further here. So the B is simply going to move left and right. These points, we now have to get into the B. And to make that work, I want to add a bit more code to the B. Specifically, I want to create a variable called marker1, which has to be a marker 2D. Then I want to duplicate all of that and have a marker 2. Really important now, both of these markers need to be exported. That way, inside of the scene in the inspector, we can assign a node to them. But that we do not want to do inside of the B. This should happen inside of the level, because now with the B selected, we can still assign nodes to these two markers. And essentially, I want to use the markers we have just created and drag them into the B. So we can just drag and drop them. We have marker one and marker two. That way we can get those two points. We just have to use them. For that, inside of the B, I want to work inside of the process function and move this one all the way to the top just to have the code a bit better organized. I think that looks a bit cleaner. Inside of the process function, all I really have to do is update the position of the B. Essentially what I want to have in there is a direction multiplied by the speed multiplied with delta. And at the moment, we don't have any part of this formula. Although I suppose delta we can get very easily. If we are removing the underscore, then we are getting delta. And speed we can simply create as a variable. Var speed can simply be, let's set this one to 25. Also, I think being able to update this variable inside of the inspector is quite useful. So it should be exported. That leaves us with one more thing to work on, the direction. Unfortunately, this one is going to be a bit more complicated. The way you want to think about it, at the moment we have a starting point and an end point, what we have gotten from the two markers. And we could have to be anywhere between those two points. And the direction we are going to use to update the position will be the direction to either one of those two markers. It should only be one at a time. To make all of that work, I want to create another variable, which is going to be the target. And by default, this target is going to be marker two. However, what is really important is that this target should only be run once the scene has been added to the scene tree. Because before that, there wouldn't be a value inside of marker two. It would simply be empty, so our target would have nothing to work with. And after we have that, Instead of the direction, I want to do some vector math. Basically, I want to get the target and its position. And from that, I want to subtract the position of the B itself. And all of that needs to be normalized. This kind of math operation, where we have an end vector and a start vector, is really common. It is simply there to get the direction from one vector to another. So if this is our current starting position or the position of the B to be a bit more specific and we have an end position, this formula would give us a vector that points towards the end point. And this we want to normalize. That way the length of this vector is always going to be one. 
Because of that, it's not going to influence the speed. The speed should only be set by the speed variable. On top of that, there's one more thing that I do want to do. And that is inside of the ready function. I want to set the position of the B to the position of marker one, meaning marker one dot position. That way, if I go to the level scene, I want the B to start on this point and then move towards the end point and then move backwards. So we are bouncing between these two points. But anyway, let's try all of that. And we can see that the B is moving towards the end point, but then doesn't do anything anymore. What happened now is that the bee has reached this point. So the bee was there and then tries to get to this point again. Sometimes it's going a bit further to the right, then tries to go back. And sometimes it goes a bit further to the left and then tries to get back to this point again. Hence, we are wiggling around this point. That is a fairly straightforward thing to fix. Although, first of all, we're going to need one more variable, which I am going to call var for word which is going to be a Boolean value that by default is going to be true. This variable will track if we are moving forwards or backwards. Or in other words, if we are moving forwards, we are moving towards marker two. And if we're not moving forwards, then we're moving towards marker one. And essentially, as soon as the B is hitting marker two or gets close enough to it, then we are inverting this forward variable. For all of that, I want to have another function. I call this one get underscore target. In there, we want to check, first of all, if the B is going forward. On top of that, we want to check and position dot distance underscore two. And we want to check if the distance to marker two and the position is smaller than 10. Essentially, we want to check if the B is moving forward and is really close to the end point, or marker two to be a bit more specific. If that is the case, we want to invert forward. So forward is going to be not forward. All of that, we also have to do the other way around, meaning I can copy this entire line and then add an or with a line break and add the second or the inverse part of this code. I basically want to check if not forward and a position to marker one position is smaller than 10, i.e. we're going backwards and we are really, really close to the first marker. If that is the case, we want to inverse forward again. If we are getting really close to either one of the markers, we are inverting the direction, or at least we're setting a variable to track the forwards direction. That we can then use to update the target. I want to check. If we are currently moving forward, then the target should be marker two. However, if we are not, so else, then the target should be marker one. With all of that, before we are updating the position, I want to get the target. And now, if I run the code and let's observe the B, it is moving between these two points. That looks really good. Very happy with that. Also, we could move these points to wherever we want. This point could, for example, be up there. If I run the code one more time, the B is simply moving between them. Although, once again, there's one thing I forgot to add, and that is that the B is not animated, which just doesn't look right. To fix that, we will need an animated Sprite2D and get rid of the Sprite2D. For the animated Sprite2D, we have to add an animation or rather a sprite frame animation with a default animation that we want to auto play. The B only has two frames. We can drag both of them in there and then we already have an animation. Let's try the game now. And we have a B flattering its wings. That looks good. However, we also have to turn around to B if it's going backwards. Later on, the logic for getting the right direction of the B is going to be a bit more complex. So I'm going to store all of that in a separate function. I call this one the flip underscore logic. For now, all that we really want to do in there is the animated sprite 2 dflip underscore h is going to be not forward. By default, we are facing to the right, but if we are going backwards, then we should be facing to the left. After we have that, we have to call flip logic. 
It doesn't really matter why you do it inside of the process function. I'm going to do it at the end. Lib logic, and now the B should be looking backwards, and that is looking pretty good. Now, the only limitation of this logic is that when you are placing the points, the endpoint always needs to be to the right of the starting point. Could become an issue later down the line for a more complex game, but I think to get started to keep things simple, this is totally fine. Just keep it in mind. But anyway, with that, we have the flip logic, which means now we want to make the B follow the player if the player gets close to it. For that, first of all, we will need the actual position of the player. And to explain that, at the moment we have a B and we have a player, but neither knows where the other one is at the moment. But that knowledge is really important for the B because the B can only follow the player if it knows where the player is. Which means we somehow have to get the player into the B. Now, you could do something that we have already done and simply create a slot or some kind of node. But if we are going to create multiple Bs, this would become kind of annoying. So instead, I am going to approach it in another way. With the player selected, I will go to node and then to groups and create a player group. Although this group will only contain a single object, the player itself, which is totally fine because next up inside of the B, I want to on ready, get the player. And since the player is now in a group that I can get from anywhere inside of the game, I can simply call get underscore tree and then get first node in group. The group I want to look at is called player. With that logic, I can get the player scene from literally anywhere inside of Godot without having to worry about different scenes. It's simply there. It's a really useful system. And after we have that, we can update the logic that the B is going to follow the player as soon as the player gets close enough. That part will be your exercise. If the player gets close to the B, make the B chase the player. On top of that, the B should always face the player as long as it is chasing him. Afterwards, if the player is far away, the B should be returning to the original path. That is going to be quite a bit of logic to implement. Pause the video now and see how far you get. Back inside of the B script, first of all, I want to check what kind of target we are getting. In there, at the moment, we are only checking if we have a forward logic, then we get marker 2, or if we are moving backwards, then we want to have marker 1. But that logic we can extend with another if statement. I want to check if the position and distance to the player dot position is smaller than a certain value. For now, let's say 80. If that is the case, the target should be the player. And then only L if that is not the case, we want to check the original markers. Now to try all of that, inside of the level, I want to update the terrain just a bit. So all of this is going to be easier to test. I want to have a flat terrain there and a flat terrain here. That way I can run away from the B without having to worry about jumping. After that, let's try all of that. And by default, the B is going to follow the player. But if the player gets far enough away, the B returns to the original path. Now this is going to be very difficult to see. For that, inside of the player with the camera selected, I want to reduce the zoom level quite a bit, let's say to 2. That is going to give us a lot more field of view. And if I now get far enough from the B, the B returns to the original path and then follows it. That still looks good. But if the player gets close enough, then the B will simply follow the player. That's still looking good. But if we get far enough away, then the B will once again return. Cool. This one is working really well. Although we are not quite done yet, because inside of the B, once the B is facing the player, the flip logic doesn't really work anymore, because we don't really care what forwards or backwards. To account for the player as well, I first of all want to check if position and distance to the player position 
is smaller than 80, which is going to be the same number we have used down there. And in fact, this one should be a variable. All the way at the top, I want to have a variable, let's call it notice radius, which is going to get a value of 80, and this one has to be an integer. Also, I think it should be exported. And now this notice radius, I want to use for the flip logic and inside of the get target function. Next up, if the player is nearby, then I want to get the animated sprite node 2D again and update flip H. The value for this one is simply going to be position.x is greater than player position.x. Let's try that one. If I now run the game and the bee is moving towards the player, it is facing the player. And if the player is to the right, it is still going to face the player. And that looks pretty good. And just to explain the logic really quick, imagine we have the bee that by default is facing to the right. On top of that, we have the player. And the player could either be to the right or to the left. If the player is on the right, then this statement is going to be false because position.x will be smaller than the player x position. However, if the player is to the left, then this condition is going to be true. Hence, we are flipping the animated sprite to D. So the B is always going to face the player. And that is basically it for the B logic. Now there's one thing I did forget that I just realized. If we are looking at the B once again, for the animated sprite 2D, at the moment, we have not applied the shader, but that we can fix quite easily. Shader material, shader quick load, and the flicker shader. Let's try all of that. I can still shoot at the B, and we are getting an error. That we forgot to update these sprite 2Ds. For both of them, we want to have the animated sprite 2D. Let's try this again. And I need the gun first of all, so I can shoot at the B, and it is going to flicker, although kind of hard to hit. Anyway, the code itself is working, so that is looking really good.